There is an abundant offering of mystery and wonder within our universe. But what do you get when you infuse humor and joy into each and every conversation? To helping others gain insight within that mystery and wonder within our everyday lives. Well, you get the Mystery and Wonder podcast where you will gain exactly that a greater experience to the abundance within. And so here is your host for today's podcast, Trixie Ropes, only on Real Revolution Radio Max. This is Trixie Phelps with Soul Balancing, and now my new podcast show, Mystery and Wonder. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your attendance. We are exploring our universe and its extraordinary and amazing life, past, present, and future. Thanks again for being here. I'm so excited to share with you my experiences as well as those of my guests. Let me first give you a little bit of information about me and how I came to be here. I am a fifth generation sensitive and intuitive empath and healer. As a little girl, I remember, and it's easier now in hindsight to look back and I can recall the times I felt and seen, you know, things happening as, you know, spirits in my room, um, voices talking to me, there's no one else around. Thankfully, those kinds of experiences weren't so traumatizing that I completely disconnected from those aspects of myself, at least in this time, any case. Um, perhaps I worked a ton in healing a lot of my past life traumas of that sort. Uh, I do also remember energy, you know, shooting out of my hands, and not in an aggressive way, just beaming, just glowing. There's like an energy coming from them. In fact, there's a time... It's a very significant memory for me when my dad wasn't feeling well. He was going through some health issues. He had some knee pain, some back pain, and he was fighting cancer. And during a visit, of course, I was feeling his pain, and I had placed my hand on his knee for a moment. We both fell silent, and he says to me, you have the hands of an angel. And, wow, that just kind of struck me, like, to the core, and that's when I really can acknowledge a light coming on for me as a young adult to begin exploring my gifts. And of course, over the years, I did become connected with my first shamanic teacher. I have had Reiki teachers, animal Reiki teachers, palm reading teachers. I taught myself how to wire wrap crystals and gemstones, which those really call for me. I've come across my second shamanic teacher and so many, many others along the way. Uh, that I'm very, very grateful for their influence and their mentoring on my path. And if in all of this, with all these variety of tools and all these processes that are out there to help us, I have combined with my uniqueness <laughs> into a business that I've started called Soul Balancing. And that's a website you can find, soulbalancing.world. The universe is quite amazing at how synchronized things are when they come across our paths. I had been pondering about this direction I was headed. And I found myself curious about radio hosting. Well, in hindsight, I can look back again and realize all the high-tech software that I had been playing around with and just teaching myself some of it. Some of it comes from a background of um, technology that I've got as well. And I believe through a mutual friend, I had become friends with the producer, Joel, on Real Revolution Radio. No, I didn't remember for the longest time how we got connected. And then there was one day for, you know, many times he's posted or that I'm on, and we never crossed paths quite so directly as this one day. And he's given a, a little kind of run through on the website. And I watched, I stayed, and you know, there was something just really catching at me, and I wasn't really sure entirely what that was. Until maybe about halfway or almost through that, he started to ask for people who were interested in being a host. And boy, you talk about prompting. So that really caught my attention, and I wasn't really sure what that means. <laughs> but I reached out. We connected. And, of course, that had begun my journey, and here we are today. So excited to be here and to share these wonderful knowings and teachings and uh, tools and experiences from so many. And with that being said, I'm very, very grateful to have a guest with me today. My special guest is Dan Liss. Dan has been doing tarot readings for more than 40 years. He's been a Reiki master for 23 years. He also offers services in numerology, past life regressions, dream interpretation, house blessing, re- readings at parties, special events, and life coaching. He loves to do 
the work that he does because of the wonderful feedback that he gets from his people. He says, it feels good to know that the work I'm doing is helping people. This is my full-time business, and I work from my home office. If you'd like to see Dan's current package offers and discounts, visit his website under his packages menu and or any of his services on the website at magicalawakenings.com. Welcome, Dan. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, well, thank you, Trixie. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, I'm so excited to have you here and share with us. You've got so much background um, to mm-hmm. offer in your field there to helping others that are still awakening or even those that have been traversing through the spiritual or metaphysical areas looking for someone to connect to. So give us a little, I guess, a little background on you, how you got started, what led you to the passion that you have with Reiki and, and the services that you're offering now. Well, it all came out of curiosity, and I think that throughout my whole life, everything I've learned has been out of curiosity, because like when I'd find out about something and I thought it sounded interesting, then I'd like to learn more. And Mm. so that happened every step along the way, because like at first, for example, when I heard about Reiki, it was because somebody I was working with at the time had taken Reiki, and she was always talking about doing Reiki healings and all that uh, she was doing and how well it worked. And so after hearing her talk about it for a while, I said, well, I'm interested now. I'd like to learn. So who would you recommend? And so she sent me to her teacher, you know, and and that's how I learned. But it was, you know, I I was hearing other people talking about this healing technique and how good it worked. I was wondering if it worked or if I could do it or, and then Mm -hmm. I took lessons and that's how I learned. And then, um, you know, I, I would say the same thing. I learned, I took a dowsing workshop with the head of the Georgia Dowsers uh, to learn about, you know, reading energies. Um, mm-hmm. I, I also uh, took a workshop with Brian Weiss about past lives. Uh, you know, there were different people I learned from along my way. I, I did a workshop with James Wanless, who created Voyager Tarot. Uh, you know, so, you know, all the way along the way, when, when something would catch my attention, then I'd say, I'd like to learn more about it. And of course, there are some things you can teach yourself. You get a good book or, you know what I mean, you just figure things out. And that's how I started with Tarot because like one year, a long time ago, I was on vacation and I was passing by this gift store and this little gift store had a deck of cards in the window and I didn't know what it was at the time. I just knew it had something to do with fortune telling by the package. And I bought it and it didn't come with an instruction book and I didn't have a teacher so back in those days, you know, I had other jobs that I supported myself with. And so I just kind of regarded it as a hobby or an experiment when I got it. And mm-hmm. so all I knew was I was meditating on these pictures, say, I wonder what this means and I wonder what that means and what if they come up together and so on. And that's how I mm-hmm. got familiar with the cards. And then since I didn't have a book or anything, I just knew um, I would always be, I would just leave my coffee table and when anybody would come to visit, if they wanted to say, oh, can you do that? And I would just say yes. And then I would say silently to my spirit guides, help me do a good reading for this person. And so that was all I knew was what I got out of meditating on the cards and then asking my spirit guides every time, help me do a good reading for this person. And so time after time, people were confirming that, you know, whatever we did during the reading addressed what was on their mind or helped give them some insight or a new idea or some fresh perspective. And so at that time, I re- didn't really know, you know, how, how I was doing it, you know what I mean? In the sense of uh, uh, like somebody else who took a, a course with a teacher and had a step-by-step or something, I just knew that I would just ask my spirit guides to help me do the reading and I would know what I knew. And so for many years, I was still making my living working for corporations and uh, then one day I decided to try my hand at it professionally. So back in those days, if you wanted to be in a psychic fair, they would test you. And so you couldn't just buy a table. You had a test first, and then they'd sell mm-hmm. you a table. Mm-hmm. And then I started, so I was doing it part-time while I still had corporate jobs full-time. And then eventually, like eight years ago, I just uh, decided that I was done working for corporations, and I took all my savings and you know just kept working at it to make this my full-time business which it has been now for like uh i'm gonna say eight, eight years or you know sometimes i forget <laughs> yeah, it, it's been so long 
Well, you yeah. know, it is funny because, like, for example, uh, recently, like, I was in a, a big show in uh, downtown Denver, and, like, a lady came up to me and says, you might not remember me, but you did the first reading I ever had when I was 16. And wow. I, like, it kind of floored me because I'm thinking, gee, I have been doing this longer than I thought. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Because obviously, when, when, as soon as I saw this woman, I didn't remember her right off, and I certainly don't remember reading I did umpteen years ago, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but things like that happen where every once in a while, and when I send out my newsletter, people will go back and say, they'll tell me something, oh, I haven't seen you in a couple of years, but you know that reading, and you said this, and then this happened. And so it's kind of like funny how you get the feedback years later sometimes, long after you've even forgotten doing the reading. Um, and, and it just, every once in a while, something like that will come up to where it really, you know, like, gosh, you have been doing this a long time. (laughs) Good validations, right? Yeah, it is good validation, but it's also interesting how I think our life unfolds in that way too. Cause like I didn't grow up dreaming of living in Colorado and I didn't grow up dreaming of being a tarot card reader or doing past lives or Reiki or something. I mean, I... I learned all that as I went. But, you know, the other thing that comes to mind is that recently, I was saying last, you know, recent years now, I have a lot of younger people coming to me um, for, you know, readings for Reiki, all this, to want me to teach them things. And I think it's really wonderful because, you know, sometimes when I was 20 years old or 19 or 21, if somebody would ask me, what do I think of chakras or auras or any of that, I would have just been totally bamboozled. You know, but now here's some of these young people that know all this stuff so that when I'm talking with them, I don't have to stop and explain what it is first. We can just go right ahead. So I think what that tells me is that some of the younger people are really well prepared to create a good life for themselves, but not only a good life, to be able to see more and do more than we did because if a lot of us who are practicing now and our teachers now we learned it kind of as we went through life. Well, here's these people starting life knowing these things. Isn't that and amazing? I, yeah. So mm-hmm. think of what kind of potential it gives them for the rest of their life if they're aware of these metaphysical energies and spiritual energies when they're 19 or 20 or 21 or you know somewhere in that ballpark, then that opens up a lot more possibilities for them in their lifetime. Um, Mm -hmm. Just like I think, you know, when we were younger, all of this stuff like alternative medicine, like even chiropractic was considered alternative years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so today, but you you can find Chinese medicine clinics everywhere. Like we got a couple in Longmont. You've got yoga studios in every shopping center. You got meditation classes all over the place. So it's kind of like. All of this stuff has exploded now, really expanded, and people are really embracing it. Whereas even when I was a kid, you know, to go to a chiropractor was like a radical idea. (laughs) It's wonderful to see the influences that that people are getting earlier on, like you say with the kids, you know, already knowing or having some understanding or, you know, there's something there that's different. And that makes a lot of sense to me. But, yeah, I agree. It influences them in such a good way at such a younger age that will impact them as they're, you know, growing up and getting older. I love it because, of course, that's all part of our shifting, you know, our growth, our ascension, our moving forward process. Even looking back, in the, even though it was a heavier, kind of darker, you know, barbaric sort of time frame, in looking back, you'll see from decade to decade to decade the changes. And every time those kids come in... <laughs> And they're shifting things and changing things and expanding things. And I think this is really no different, just in a kind of higher frequency way, though. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. Well, I mean, think about how, like, for example, you know, another one of those things that when I was growing up, you, you know, you would only find massage therapists associated with like a country club or a sports team or something. But once Mm -hmm. again, today, you can find massage therapists in every shopping center. I think it's is good and and what happens is then people have these ideas that these other things like massage like chiropractic like herbalism all that can help them stay healthy and we didn't even know that when we were kids 
And no, so now I, I love it that it's more common and that we all have access to it, you know? Yes, I love it as well. It's a very, very good feeling, for sure. Mm-hmm. You can see how it affects people, even subtly, even if they're not conscious about it. You know, there's a, there's a result that happens when they're, you know, experiencing or being curious, like you said, you know, just to be curious and explore and experience these things sure. as to how they change and grow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I find the same thing is still true today, just like when I was, you know, getting interested in learning Reiki, I just heard good things about it, but didn't know what it was. And Mm -hmm. so that's why I sought out a teacher. And that's the same reason why some people come to me today. It's like they've heard about it. They've heard good things about it and they want to know. So then they'll contact me about learning or at least trying it, having, having a session to see how it is. So they get to try it. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's profound, not only for what they'll be able to do for themselves, but also for those that they're going to be around, family, friends, you know, anybody mm-hmm. like that that they're around. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Well, I think also, you know, our desire to learn is just constant because when you look at the world and how everything works, I mean, you know, it, it would be natural to question, you know, what's the influence of spirit in our lives or, you know, how do we make the world work better for ourselves and other people or you know is there some more satisfying things we could be doing with our lives so you know i think all of these are are just natural questions that we all face and so i think that uh that the curiosity is always going to be the fire that lights a person up it's like you know you know i mean people today have the same questions i did at the beginning like I wonder if this is any good to do. I wonder if I'm any good at it. I wonder if I should be doing this, you know. Yeah. And so you experiment to find out. And um, I think that, too, uh, a thing that was useful to me and probably anybody, I would say again, starting now, was like when I first learned to work with the cards then for years, I just did free readings for anyone who wanted just to see if I could do it and how it worked because I was making my money elsewhere. But the idea was Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get a feel for doing it before I started offering my services professionally. And I did the same thing after I learned Reiki. I didn't do lots of freebies. I mean, I'll always do some, you know what I mean, for hardship cases and that. But, I mean, um, like for the first several years after I learned, I just was doing the healing for people. I wasn't attempting to teach and so then, you know, so, some people might want to jump into teaching as soon as they get their certificate. But my feeling was I wanted to get a feel for how it is to do the work and do the healing before I offer my services to teach other people. And I think that made me a better teacher because then by the time I started mm-hmm. teaching, I had several years experience under my belt. Yeah. And this yeah, way that you've embodied it. Mm-hmm. And, and also, you know what I mean? There's always some things you'll learn from a teacher or a book. But then there's other things that you're going to learn by practicing so mm-hmm. that when you're actually in the process of doing things, you say, you know, I wonder if it would work better if I do it this way or I wonder if I could do it that way. And mm-hmm. I think those are the things you'll learn by doing that you're, you're going to stumble across some really nice discoveries that weren't in the book or your teacher didn't tell you. That's so and, very true because you're going to be bringing in some of your own um, aspects of that through your higher self or through your guides or guardians and those that you connect with it comes in as well to expand even further from what that teaching was yeah very very yeah. true mm-hmm. very good yeah so wonderful yeah and thank you for being such a good teacher and so dedicated to you know understanding what it is that you're going to pass on to others even you know There's well thank you built in with that yeah I appreciate well that. you know i think part of the reward of doing this kind of work and I, I would venture to say that other guests you have on our show will tell you the same thing, which is uh, part of the pay we get for doing this is not just that people are paying us a fee to do the work, but also, you know, every time somebody comes to see me, they leave saying, I feel better now. Mm-hmm. And so getting that kind of rewarding feedback to knowing that you're helping other people and knowing that it's working Uh, is really part of the reward of doing the work and that's part of what inspires me to keep going because you know people are telling me that it helped them and they're feeling better and they're getting better and in some cases you can literally see it like if I could do you know before and after shots but of course you know for I don't do before and after shots on everybody because you know just respecting people's privacy but 
I mean, you could literally, and working with them, see the difference from time to time with some people to where their, mm-hmm. their transformation looks physical. Oh, very, uh, very true. I, I said that to clients before when they get done in a session. I'm like, well, wait, you look so different. I'm like, you look, and sometimes it's like they look taller or they look more alert or, you know, they just, there's a difference. There's just something, and there's a glow. And sometimes there's that hopefulness yes. back in them or a joy or, you know, some kind of excitement, relief, and you can just tell the weight's lifted off. And that's just amazing. Yeah, it's a good That's feeling, a, you're right. <laughs> so that I see that same exact thing, so exactly the way you said it. And I think that that's always, yeah. you know, if you compare that to, like, lots of times people could be working for some corporation or, you know, nobody ever comes around and tells you, I'm glad you're here. You did a good job. You know, what I, and, and so people are... <laughs> yeah. Kind of like that's, you know, like, am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? Is it worth being here? And and so, you know, a lot of times they don't get that validation from the work they're doing. And I think that always helps any person, no matter what kind of business you're in. And that's mm-hmm. why, too, like even when I go to the grocery store or I'm getting my car fixed or going to the post office or whatever, I'm always thanking those people that, uh, you know, were helping me. Because yeah, I, nice. I know that they're trying to do a good job for me, too, and, you know, showing some appreciation, you know, because, like, uh, yeah. just like the other day when I was going to the gym, I mean, the person who was checking in ahead of me was kind of rude, and so when I came up right after the person, I told the person at the counter, don't worry about it, you know, and I mean, it's like, you know, everybody has to deal with, a, you know, somebody who's not behaving well every once in a while, but, you know, it's still a good day. You know? Yeah, excellent. Good, good. Because, you know, a lot of... <laughs> exactly. Cause I think if you can help people feel better wherever they are in relation to your life, you're spreading love around. Absolutely. You see what I mean? Absolutely. Because yeah. I think a lot of times when people, when you bring up the word love, people only think about, like, romantic relationship, you know? Yeah. And uh, the thing is that we have relationships with everybody we deal with regularly. So whether they're a friend or a relative, but also, you know, merchants we deal with all the time or repair people we deal with or, you know, just other people when we're getting around doing stuff, you know, like going to the gym or going to the store or whatever. It's like there's a lot of love in the atmosphere in a humanitarian sense mm-hmm. that when you're, yeah. you're doing something to be helpful to other people and you're just going about your normal business, you can put a lot of love in the atmosphere, which then enhances the amount of personal love you get back in your life too, because if everybody likes dealing with you, then you're even in better shape relative to your personal love relationship because your whole atmosphere is filled with love. Yes, and when your atmosphere is full of love, that's where it's going to manifest with the law of attraction, bringing you more of the same. Absolutely makes sense to me. Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah, very, very cool. (laughs) Very cool. I am curious if you, it's kind of switching topics a little bit, but I am curious about your numerology and uh, how you work with that or incorporate that with what you're offering as well. Well, actually, I like numerology real well. You know, it's kind of funny. To me, numerology is a simple tool, just like using the pendulum. You know, it's a real simple device, been around for centuries, and yet it, Mm -hmm. it can be dead on. You know what I mean? Like I've had people... When I do their numbers for them, they'll say, that's interesting. That's my life path number. Well, that's always been my favorite number or it's my lucky number. And so it's kind of interesting. Like, you know, here's this thing, numerology, they never thought of before, but gee, it works out to be their lucky number. (laughs) Um, And and also it cross-references nicely uh, when you're doing, say, for example, you do numerology and then you do a card reading for somebody or you do numerology and then a rune reading or, you know, you can do that with other things so that, uh, you know, there's, there's, let's just say, inference. Like, in other words, if you cross-reference a person's numbers with their zodiac sign, so astrology obviously is a complicated thing and it goes beyond you know what I mean? Because, uh, mm-hmm. but even just knowing what a person's sun sign is, and then you cross-reference that with their numbers, you can see how certain things fit. So it's kind of like a, a different way of detailing their characteristics and their life path uh, nice. and their life energy. 
So I, I do a simple numerology for everybody, but of course numerology includes like other steps and other processes, but you know, for every person who comes to me, I work out their life path and their personal energy year. So, Wonderful. you know, if somebody Very wanted a more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I just put that in with the other things. In other words, like uh, once in a while, somebody may want a separate reading just for numerology, but most of the time, they'll get the numerology from me in conjunction with whatever else they're getting. Nice. Because nice. it yeah, only I takes like me it. a few minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Well, that's excellent. Yeah, that's very good. I love how it complements, too. You know, so many of our metaphysical modalities do, you know. Yeah, they just, yeah. They all are very complementary to each other. And like you said, once you've combined some with others, it, it adds to the detail of information that you can gain from it. That's sure. Cool. Well, you know, cool. sometimes when you look at the numerology and then, for example, every time I do a Reiki for somebody, I'm also measuring the auras and chakras. And it's interesting how different readings of the uh, chakras, for example, will correlate with their life numbers or, you know, with, mm -hmm. with their card reading or something. It's just, you know, the things do, um, I'm going to say, overlap and they support yeah. each other in different ways. And yeah. so here it is, this rethink came up in a reading and guess which chakra stuck or which one's wide open, you know. Um, yeah. And I think the same thing happens if a person is trying to figure out what might be an important decision for them coming up. I would, I would say, think, you know, more than one way to get an answer. So like, for example, maybe you get a tarot reading or a rune reading or you check with the pendulum or maybe you check with the I Ching or... So in other words, that you... <clears throat> look uh, to more than one source for an answer and then see if they agree or disagree or, you know, how they add to each other. Uh, because it's true, a lot of these different methods we use would be, you know, overlapping, you know, and mm -hmm. so they, they, they either could enhance each other or support each other. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of like saying you're getting different perspectives as well. You know, you're using exactly. what comes from one modality or another but when you combine several you're getting even another yet type of perspective to approaching whatever your client is or you know exactly looking for. yeah that's really mm -hmm. great yeah kind of more all-encompassing you could say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you know I, I often when people are coming to me let's just say for a reading because let's say they're contemplating you know, a new relationship or a job change or a move, you know, things like that. Uh, they they are looking really, I think, for a second opinion, you know, for some validation. So I think right. oftentimes I would say, you know, if you're thinking of changing a job, you can consult with, let's say, a career, you know, uh, consultant or an accountant or a lawyer or, you know, various other kinds of people so then, let's say, getting a tarot reading or a, a rune reading or numerology reading or something like that to go with it would give you another perspective different than what the career counselor said or the accountant said. Mm -hmm. and, then, and sometimes you find, again, that those things could dovetail beautifully, but sometimes it may also bring something to mind that the accountant or the lawyer or the career coach didn't see. True, yes, because they're specializing in their particular industry or what they're offering. And that's very, very great to have such a focus, you know, or, or that um, tie to it, just that direct, but then having mm -hmm. other perspectives and other options to kind of, yeah, weigh it out, get some insight, consult, uh, get some, you know, information to kind of better gauge as well yes. uh, what is best for that person on their path at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, same. Well, think about this, too. Like uh, some of my clients for Reiki have had other, let's say, recent surgeries or they're going through maybe chemotherapy or, you know, I mean, they've had other things. So, like, what I'm doing is complementary to that. So it's not like instead of having surgery, but sometimes, mm -hmm. like, the Reiki can help their body heal after their surgery. Yeah. Or yes. maybe help that. them. Yes. You know, calm down before the surgery because sometimes if a doctor tells a person you're going to need this procedure the person gets very nervous about having mm -hmm. the procedure 
And so sometimes the Reiki can help calm a person so that when they go see their doctor for that procedure, they're in a more calm state of mind. Oh, that is very helpful for sure. And I've known it to also be helpful, like you said, after these types of things, that they have to have surgery and such, that sometimes their bodies aren't necessarily compatible or it's like a shock or a trauma in the body from the actual surgery process. Like it, it yes. feels like there's a violation to the body and or if there's, say, a replacement, like knee replacement, hip replacement, sometimes these yeah. are things that are inserted in the body and it has a rejection process to it, then what you're offering is very important for that to be compatible, for the body to accept it, you know, to release the trauma and heal, as well as any medications from my understanding as well, you know, that sometimes those side effects are so intense, even though the medication might be helping. So this work can help to reduce the side effects without affecting the quality that the medication is offering. So it's really yeah. profound, isn't it? It is, and that's really true because sometimes, well, like, for example, it's commonly known that when people are going through chemo and radiation, oftentimes they have a problem with nausea. Yeah, you know, exactly. Right, right. And mm-hmm. so maybe may, you know, Reiki, among other things, can help calm down that nausea. Yes, uh, yes, that's perfect. Yeah, and there's a, it's, it's really amazing. There's a lot of people that just don't really think about these alternative modalities like Reiki being so helpful you know, in this way. It's a compliment to even our technology, our surgeons, our doctors, you know. <laughs> it's, it's complimentary to really anything in life if that person is open to it. <laughs> Absolutely. And a lot of times, too, I mean, it, it covers all spectrum because the Reiki can be helpful to a person who's, let's say, for example, just stressed about their work or their love life or whatever. And so the Reiki can help them calm down relative to those issues but it's also good for people who have real you know physical issues like recent surgery and so on so it really covers a full spectrum so i mean let's say sometimes just that you know how like the buddhists call a mental chatter monkey mind Mm -hmm. i always like that you know because like this is where you know a lot of times we talk too much to ourselves. And yeah, so and get lost here, in the thoughts, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, and so sometimes it helps you to be able to relax that monkey mind. Number one, because, you know, when your mind is all, you know, jabbering, that's why sometimes your body doesn't quite feel right. Like you get upset stomachs and headaches and so on. But at the same time, let's just say if you're trying to calm down so you can pass this test or to, uh, past this job interview or something like that being calm could be your first step toward achieving a goal and these days anymore it seems like you kind of people seek out how to be calm even around their own families you know or get to yeah. gatherings reunions <laughs> well, a lot yeah. of conflicts really yeah really presenting in family dynamics so this would be really useful there <laughs> yeah very interesting. All right, so we're just going to take a moment to go to break. And for those of you that would like to continue reading more about Sam's offerings, please feel free to visit his website at magicalawakenings.com. And we will have more of this great information and on the other side of this commercial. Whether it's coming from the world of entertainment, integrative medicine, quantum theory, conspiracy facts, ancient archaeology, sacred geometry, financial trends, or perhaps even from the very world of self-help and motivational speaking, Real Revolution Radio possesses the information you need. Listen today to our daily inspiring lineup of podcast radio talk shows only on realrevolutionradio.com. Today, to the Marine Show, where we will introduce you to the world of alternative remedies. Join Marie Pisani as she hosts discussions with leading experts in the fields of hypnotherapy, acupuncture, yoga, Ayurveda, EFT, chronic healing, integrative medicine, and so much more. Marie will also brave topics that many consider taboo. Yes, taboo talk. Tune in today to the Marine Show heard on popular social media and now on Smart TV. Hey, it's a moment for this radio production only on RealRevolutionRadio.com. Magical 
day to you, dear friends, and welcome to Death Becomes You Too. Please know that the views shared here are not necessarily shared by all, but let's know that we can agree to disagree. We are here to open up, to illuminate our minds, and to be a part of the conscious evolution that is sweeping across the world, taking shape on planet Earth today. And now to guide you in spirit to the most controversial, but yet the least explored on the subject matter of death. Here is your host for tonight's paradigm shifting broadcast, Maria Dancing Heart. Hoagland. A quantum mindfulness radio production only on realrevolutionradio.com. And if you too would love to become a podcaster today or perhaps even an ad sponsor with our network on realrevolutionradio.com, please by all means call us toll free at 844 414 R E. A-L. Again, that is toll-free, 844-414-REAL-7325. And find out more about how you too can become an inspiration, a wonderful talk show host on our inspiring and growing podcast radio talk show network. Only here on RealRevolutionRadio.com. must address four levels physical emotional mental and spiritual for us to live joyful and productive lives we tend to treat three of the four leaving the spiritual languishing if you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life soul balancing is for you Trixie Phelps owner and founder of soul balancing is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms including shamanism Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field a soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life changing long distance session today. www.soulbalancing.world. Five, four, three, two, one. Cleveland, we now have liftoff to a higher level of consciousness. Tune in to realrevolutionradio.com, the number one source for independent music and inspirational podcast radio. Awaken, evolve, inspire, and join the evolution only on realrevolutionradio.com. You're listening to realrevolutionradio.com. There's hope as long as you're alive. Uh, thank you for joining me back on the second segment of this show with my special guest, Dan List. Again, we're talking over many topics with his offerings of Reiki, numerology, past life regression, dream interpretation, house blessings, readings at parties, special events, and life coaching. We've been having such a wonderful conversation, some really good information coming through. And so much more to talk about before we run out of time. I mean, we'll see what much more we can squeeze in here. I would like to, if you don't mind, share a little bit about your past life regression. I'm guessing dream interpretation must also feel like it connects to this. Well, it does. Uh, and, of course, if you just think about it, so for me to help a person with dream interpretation, they have to tell me about their dreams. Uh, mm -hmm. But the idea there is that oftentimes we get signs from spirit in our dreams. So, like, in other words, there's one aspect called precognition, to where sometimes we get to have a vision in our dreams of something that's going to be happening. So here we feel like, you know, this is familiar, you know, and, and then you think back on it. If you keep notes, if you have a notebook, you look back and say, oh, I dreamed about that a week or two ago, and here I am doing it. Uh, yeah, so notes are so helpful that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, we also get, you know, clues in our dreams too. Like, let's just say if we take notes, again, you'll find – repetitive patterns with characters or events in our dreams. And then what happens? Well, so every time this 
let's say sign or symbol or person comes up in our dream, something good happens, but in other cases, every time something comes up, oh, something bad happens. But the idea is that we're aware and therefore we can plan or deal with it. And so sometimes when people are uh, facing an important life decision, they may be getting messages in their dreams directly related to that, but you know, unless they're able to decipher it, they're not quite sure what does that mean. And so I, I help people with that because a lot of times, uh, you know, something that popped up in their dream might be a word in advance about this job they're thinking of taking or a place they want to move to or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that plus also we can ask our spirit guides to show us answers to our questions and our dreams. Yes, so that, yes. And being open in the dream state as we sleep mm -hmm. is a perfect time for that to come through as we're yes. out of our own way. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> Yep, so we do that, and then with the past lives, basically, I started researching past lives for myself because I wanted to know things about my own life. So at the very beginning, I was happy to come across this discovery because, of course, when I was growing up, nobody ever mentioned that. Um, right. But then there were questions about my own life and my life path and that I didn't, I wasn't able to find answers to. And then when I found out about past lives, then I started researching it. And then I started by getting sessions from other people. And then, you know, I came across Brian Weiss's books. And back in the 90s, I was the uh, editor of the metaphysical magazines for Metro Atlanta. In fact, from the 80s through the early 2000s, I was. Uh, and so, like, every time he had a new book, he'd come to Atlanta, and I would interview him because he was on the book tour. And then mm -hmm. when he came around to do workshops, took his workshops. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I had this wonderful opportunity to learn from one of the best. Uh, but, it, you know, the real value, again, I went back to it. I was trying to find out something about myself. So I, I wasn't investigating past lives at the beginning because I was thinking of another way to make money. I was right. just approaching it to find out something about my life. And so I think it, I continue that perspective in my practice with other people so that when people are coming in here for a past life re reading or regression, they're looking for something that would be useful to them in this life. And I think oftentimes when we look at a person's skills or talents, there may be some carryover, like maybe they've done this before and were very successful. Uh, so skills, talents, and abilities, and then sometimes great fears and phobias, because that might be the only way to think about, well, why is this person born with a fear of heights, or where is this person born with a fear of water or small spaces or what have you? So it's like that also tells something to the person and, and gives them a clue. So a past life story could reveal the source of that. And sometimes, like, for example, re understanding what the source of that was relieves them of that pressure in this lifetime. But by the same token, when a skill or talent or ability is recognized as having been present in a person more than once, that might encourage them to go on their path and say, Absolutely. Yeah. You know? So the real idea there, and I think a lot of times in the past, people will make jokes about past life work and say, oh, it's all silly. Uh, but the thing is that I always try and draw out the lessons for the person. How does that relate to this lifetime, the current lifetime? So you see, I think a lot of times, uh, you, know, it, you know, people who don't know and don't get into this, they may be just making fun of it and thinking it's frivolous. But the truth is that when we start to look at the patterns of our own life, there are certain things that make sense, but they don't make sense until we see them in the right light. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> it could be right soon after, or it could be months or years and decades after. <laughs> It yes. depends on when that message actually clarifies itself or that experience, but yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Oh, that's a, it's a really great story to hear. Do you have a particular memory of a past life regression that you experienced yourself uh, that really made a difference, like changed the trajectory, you know, maybe of your path, or, or that's what happened to then become, oh, this is so profound, I'm going to, I think, offer this as well. Do you have any kind of a, a memory or experience like that? I do. Uh, I would say <clears throat> the thing that kicked it all off for me was I was born with 
a, a crippled leg. I had a club foot and, and a leg that was not formed properly at birth. Mm. So I had lots of surgeries from the time I was a little kid to fix that. And the doctors did a great job so that, you know, today, I, I mean, for my whole life, I've been able to get around and, and you know, enjoy normal activities like other people. <clears throat> but also, of course, with one leg being a little bit bigger than the other, I'm kind of a lopsided runner. But I can walk real well, and I can bicycle, I can swim, you know what I mean? So a lot of, you know, I mean, I've played ordinary sports like basketball or tennis, you know what I mean? But the thing is that, uh, and then early in life, my even my teachers were recognizing that I was an excellent writer. So here I am, sort of further along in life, and you know, I'm, I'm asking myself the question, like, why was I born with a crippled leg and an ability to write? And so, you know, I asked my mother, and my mother says, that's just the way God plans it. And so I said, why does he plan it that way? I don't know, it's just the way he does it. So, of course, <laughs> that wasn't much of an answer. But later on in life, then, when I found out about past lives, the story that came up that answered me was that in an ancient uh, society, like the, with the Aztecs, I was a runner. And back then, before the Spaniards brought horses, Runners were the way messages were delivered between the kings and, the, and the, you know, the ruling party and the, the clergy and the wealthy merchants and all on. So, uh, but in that lifetime, I was also a champion athlete, champion runner, but I also was never taught to read and write because in that society, only the upper class people were taught to read and write, which is also true of like how European societies developed. To, you know, the peons weren't taught to read and write, but the nobles, the clergy, and the merchants knew how to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. So the sign to me that, we, in other words, this, the story that came out of that was, of course, I can't prove that was true, but it was the only thing I ever heard that made sense. And so they mm -hmm. said that I was born in this sign with a light, with a, uh, I was born in this lifetime with a sign that this lifetime was not to be about champion athletics, but rather about expressing vision. Mm, very nice. And so yeah, I did. That's a nice uh, profound message out of uh, uh, past life regression, yes? It was. And I did spend much of my working career, you know, uh, as a professional writer, editor, and writing teacher. So, I mean, I was right in line, and I had my degree in that, too. So it was right in line. So, in other words, it, it also didn't change the course of my life because by the time I discovered this, I was already a professional writer and I already knew I was going to be a professional athlete. But in other words, so it confirmed the path I was on, which I think is also valuable for people uh, yeah. who are interested in getting this experience too, because like you're asking, have I made the right life choices? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Or am I doing something that's really aligned with my spirit? And so in my case, I was confirming the life choices that I already made, but for the first time in my life, the way I was born made sense. Wow, and it's so helpful, isn't it? And the clarity that must come with that, you know, through the, the feeling validated and knowing the direction more, more, knowing more anyway, as to the direction that you are on or going and is tremendously helpful. You're right. It is. It is. And I think that um, that's, that's a thing that people find in, in doing this kind of work. And I think that's also what people are seeking sometimes, like, did I make the right life choices, you know, or am I acting in accord with spirit or am I making best use of my energies? And so I think that a lot of times when people are asking questions like this through a method like past lives or dream interpretations that they're, they're trying to decipher, am I on track? And, mm -hmm. and the value of that session could simply be to confirm that that person's on track rather than, you know, let's say revealing something totally out there that they never heard of. Yes, that is helpful. It's a common conversation that a lot of people have about, and it's usually referred to, you'll hear it commonly as your life purpose. Same, same mm -hmm. a different way of re referring to it, yeah. Um, very common, lots of people. And it's so really interesting that, yes, the, the past life regressions or the dream interpretations, these um, processes, even the Reiki, are helpful to helping someone, you know, learn a little more about themselves <laughs> in a mm -hmm. shorter amount of time rather than trying to figure it out over the entire course of their lifetime. And then we end up finding out when we do give a little information that it really is all about following your passion. 
that is yes. already a guidance, an internal guidance system helping us to figure out what that is. And a lot of that is even just enjoying the journey <laughs> along the way, you know, not to be so serious just in order to get to your destination, but rather enjoying the journey and the path that brings you to whatever achievement that you're looking for. And for many, that achievement is is temporary, you might say, or a boost mm -hmm. into something even bigger yet to come, where that might have been what they perceived to be the end-all, be-all. When they get there, it's just another huge stepping stone into another direction. So this whole life is just a, a wonderful opportunity to experience, and it's mm -hmm. following your passion, right, that passion will guide us. So I love how these modalities, though, offer us a little faster, sort of quicker insight to knowing where we're at or what's happening, like interferences or, you know, confusion, and mm -hmm. help us to get back on that track a little quicker. It's really, yes, very, very helpful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So many opportunities that are out there, and, of course, coming out of those program states of mind that, you know, most, most have been in as to, oh, no, you need to do this, oh, and they're being told, you know, that's, that's kind of the breakaway as well as from coming from being told who you are and what you're doing to branching into, this is me, this is who I want to be, <laughs> and letting mm -hmm. others see you in that light is huge. And I feel like that's a big theme, a big transition we're seeing with a lot of people. So services like what you offer are really, really helpful and very, very supportive during these times. I'm very, very glad, again, very grateful that you and so many are out here doing this and offering these things for people. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, I'm happy to be doing it, too. And I think, too, that maybe what, what you're kind of leading up to is like, uh, you know, as we make the discoveries through life, too. I mean, if you would ask me 30 or 40 years ago, do you think you're going to be making a living doing this? I would like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but <Yeah>. now <laughs> I'm doing this and there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. Yes. And this is what yes. I'm going to do for the rest of my life, for sure. Because at least yes. it's Reiki to no heavy lifting, you know. <laughs> Breaking well, into row don't require heavy lifting. No, but, you know, that's kind of the that's the truth with anybody who essentially finds their passion. Let's say if there is right. a little literal physical lifting that some yeah. like some can't do that others can, it's really not even going to feel like a burden or a project for those that are doing it. Yeah. If it's their passion, right? When we exactly. it's really interesting. I don't want to go. People be like, I don't want to drive a couple hours away for whatever, whatever. But if there's an event happening a couple hours away that they do want to be a part of, they will go, and it will not seem like it's time-consuming or a waste of time. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. all perspective, I think, in, within what our passion is. And, of course, right. regardless, like I say, of how difficult it is physically, mentally, emotionally, it's not. It really is not going to be difficult for the person who is there because they're there out of passion and heart and you know, right. and stuff like this. So, yeah, yeah, I agree I'm, with you totally. <laughs> I mean, I, I joke about the heavy lifting, you know what I mean? But the thing is, yeah, you know, yeah. how many uh -huh. people do you know that say, oh, I got a job, but I hate it, or they're, they're living for the weekend. Like, you know, Monday through Friday is a real drag, so I'm looking forward to Saturday and Sunday because that's yeah. when I get to goof around and go places. And I think that that's a big difference between getting up every day, doing something you love doing, or saying, well, I never get to have any fun until the weekend, or I hate my job, but at least it's a paycheck. So I think mm -hmm. it's, a, you know, it has a bearing on your whole quality of life. So of course, everybody's not going to be a healer or a reader for a living. But the thing is, whatever you're doing, even if let's just say you enjoy being a carpenter, or you enjoy working on cars, or whatever it is that you enjoy doing, you enjoy being a cook, that you do that every day and you enjoy it and you do that for the rest of your life not just mm -hmm. you know saying well i'm waiting yeah. for the weekend or waiting for vacation right it's no longer a burden it's no longer an obligation yeah when it's coming mm -hmm. from art or passion and you know bringing up a, a like a culinary chef or you know a cook of a, is one of my favorite examples of somebody who's following their passions <laughs> if you've ever I and mean, there's a lot of us who have you go out to eat somewhere or even at a, it doesn't even have to be a restaurant per se. It could be at somebody's house, you know, you're visiting or something. But when you go somewhere to eat, there will be times where you get a meal that just hits the spot. It just tastes delicious. Everything about it is wonderful in its own right. And then other mm -hmm. times 
we could go eat somewhere and it makes us sick or, you know, there's something about it that just isn't, it's not hitting the spot, you know, it is a lot, a lot to be said about the person who prepares the food or the meal. What kind of a space were they in? What kind of mm-hmm. mindset? Well, it makes obvious sense here to say that when the meal is yummy, delicious, nutritious, and you know, really hits a spot, but that person preparing the meal was coming from a place of passion and love. And you're eating on that. You're actually receiving some of that through what was prepared. And, of course, the opposite is true when you're getting a meal that's not. That person was probably having a very, very bad day <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, or something was going on, and whatever they were feeling in that moment is going to come through in the food that they're preparing. And this, of course, goes way beyond food. This could be for anybody mm-hmm. who's crafting, creating, making something, or just even simply offering services. A lot right. of how we feel about what we're doing is being transferred over to others that are interacting. So that's, it is quite big. It's a big deal, really. Sure. Yeah, to follow well, your if we take it, uh, take it beyond food preparation, because exactly what you're saying about food is correct, but just think about all the other things people do for a living, too. I mean... Don't you want your computer worked on by somebody who loves working on computers? Right. You know, yes. <laughs> you know uh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. you know, somebody fixing your car who loves working on cars. Yes, you know? yes. So this way, you know, you're getting that same level of quality in there. They care enough to do a good job. Yes, absolutely. See, true with the doctors and nurses and you know, all these mm-hmm. other professions, teachers Absolutely. included, you know, just so many professions. And with that being said, it's, it's a nice time to kind of point out giving gratitude to these people. You know, they're overwhelmed, they're overworked, even if it is a field or an industry that they're happy to be in because of the overwhelm, right, that's happening. They, they lose that passion or they mm-hmm. lose that interest. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very, very helpful to boost them, you know, on some level, if you're leaving a small gift or you're showing your appreciation in your tip or you're sending referrals, you know, there's so many ways to show your, your appreciation for these. Well, since you mentioned that, uh-huh. that, that's what the first thing I do every morning is to thank my spirit guides for giving me another day because mm-hmm. we don't, none of us know exactly how many days we got. But the thing is, uh-huh. as long as I got this day, I'm going to make my best use of it. And same thing for, I encourage all my clients to do that too. And then the second thing I do is ask them if they have any ideas for me today or any advice for me today or anything they want me to know so that in that dialogue every morning um, I'm expressing gratitude. And, for example, also I express gratitude for every client they send me or every person who calls on me. And then I promise my spirit guide to do my best for whoever that is, whoever's coming to me for whatever reason they're coming to me. So mm-hmm. it's like... You know, you got to figure that if somebody just Googling and they said, well, I just found you and I decided that I wanted to talk to you because I found you on Google or whatever. And then it's like, well, you got to think, well, somebody wanted us to meet because there's billions of people in the world and billions of people on the Internet. So if somebody mm-hmm. says, I was just Googling and found you, somebody wanted us to meet. Yes, yes, very true. And I take, I take that somebody to be our spirit guides. Otherwise, we would have steered yes. them to somebody else. Absolutely, yes, yes. <laughs> so you see, when you put those two things together, that gratitude every day, like being grateful for everything that's happening in your life, being grateful for all the good developments, uh, mm-hmm. being grateful for all the people in your life, uh, that, yeah. that that's absolutely a keystone for getting more of what you want because your free spirit guides keep getting the message from you of, thank you for sending me these people or thank you for this good development today or thank you for this opportunity then your spirit guys are going to say, well, they really appreciate that. Let's give them some more. <laughs> and also, if you're saying, do you have any advice for me today or anything you want me to know or any new ideas, then they're also following through with you that way, too, to say, oh, well, since he's listening to us and paying attention, let's give him some more ideas or some more uh, information. And I think that that's part of the... In other words, I think if you keep that kind of dialogue going with your spirit guides every day in an aura of gratitude, then you also are going to run into less emergencies. Because if you're always in tune with following and saying, I got a sign that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, I got a sign this is my best choice, I got a sign I should do it this way, then you're going to be going with the flow and you're not going to be keeping bumping into, you know, emergencies and crises. Mm-hmm. It's true because it's part of how we're creating a reality. 
to be able mm-hmm. to say, this is what I want to experience because you as an individual, as a human being in this universe of law, free will, and, you know, we have that, that capability to manifest and create what we want. In fact, we are, whether, you, whether people know it or not, that is what we're doing. <laughs> right. And, of course, the more conscious that we can become around making those decisions, and, cha- and choosing to change mm-hmm. our mindset and what we're saying and being more grateful and so we are then creating a very different reality from where we've come from. So I agree, yeah, the gratitude, whether you're doing it at night or in the morning or throughout the day, is just profoundly beneficial for you, you know, or whoever that person is that's doing it and what they're going to get in return, you know, or what's going to be sent right. back to them in return. Yeah, well, so one even of if it techniques- doesn't make sense, it's... Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say, you know, one of the techniques for having peace in your life and getting a good night's sleep is before you go to sleep at night, instead of worrying about things, you know, uh, remember all the good things that happened to you today and give thanks once again at the end of your day for the good things that have happened. And this way, it'll help you get a good night's sleep. Yes, yes. It's almost so, yeah, like a release of a release of the day's energies, activities, a, a letting go and acknowledgement, but gratitude around it as well, mm-hmm. or those that were a part of that. Yeah. Right, right. So you're starting your day with gratitude and ending your day with gratitude. So you see, you're making a complete cycle, and in mm-hmm. doing that, you keep yourself in a constant state. But not just keeping you in a constant state. I mean, think about the peace of mind it brings you and the appreciation of life. If you are saying, thank you for sending me these people, thank you for sending me these opportunities, thank you for sending me whatever, you know, that uh, you're counting your blessings. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, where your mind goes, your energy goes. So if you keep thinking of negative things and problems, well, guess what you get more of? But if you're thinking about all the good things that are happening to you, guess what you get more of? Absolutely, yes. We put out those vibrations, and that's what the law of attraction of the universe is responding to. It doesn't know verbal English or other mm-hmm. languages that we speak. It knows vibration because everything is energy. So that makes exactly. complete sense to me, at least, yeah, that what you put out is, is what you're attracting. And that is, of course, what's creating your reality. Uh, exactly. It's huge. It's really huge, yeah. And it takes practice. I fall out of that category. <laughs> Every so often, I'll get myself in there. Things are going great. Somewhere in there, I've lost track of something or other, and then, boom, I'm out again. I'm like, oh. Yep. <laughs> and pop right back in, and you just keep going. And before you know it, you're going to be in there all the time. It's just that process. So never to be hard on oneself or when, you know, things aren't going quite like they want to. Just look at the information it's providing. Look at the, you know, lessons that might have come from it, and then reevaluate what you the gain from that, even if it's a process of elimination, which I often talk about. You know, we learn something. Yeah, I've learned who not to be like through that experience, or I learned what I am not going to do because of mm-hmm. that experience. But it's still important because that process of elimination is what's helping us to better refine and have better clarity as to what we do want. So instead mm-hmm. of dismissing that, I would encourage our listeners to really embrace whatever their experiences are in hindsight, preferably, and just say, what did I get from this? What's important? What do I want to continue forward with? And what am I willing to let go of? And just kind right. of start moving forward in those ways to really, yeah, create more of the reality they want, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's profound. And it's a new thought for a lot of people who are um, still trying to learn and awaken and figure this out, you know. So it, it, it could be that simple. What you're mm-hmm. feeling is what you're attracting. That's how simple right. it can be. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I would always say to pay attention to your feeling because that's part of how you get the answers to questions. So, like, if you're asking your spirit guides, is this my best choice, <clears throat> you'll get that gut feeling. And then say, mm-hmm. you know, if it's really reassuring and positive, then you know you're on track. But if you, your stomach starts churning when you ask, am I doing the right thing or is this the best choice for me, then you know you've got to change course. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so it's a real feeling level because they're not explaining to you in advance like what's up next or how did that happen. In other <laughs> words, the, uh, they're just giving you the prompt in the direction of yes and no. They're not giving you uh, an explanation for why did that happen. Right, right, yeah. It's a personal experience, I think. The same occurrence could happen to 
and multiple of people and the message or the, you know, the lesson that comes from it is going to be unique to that person. So there's never going to be that one for all kind of package or explanation or, you know, checklist mm -hmm. or whatever it be. I think it, it's, it is important that that individual, you know, look at it themselves as well as having others help them to discern it or decipher it and so forth. But it's yes. very important for them to do that themselves. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Helps with some of the embodiment. It helps with some of the letting go. It helps with tremendously with the healing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, Dan, well, we're nearing the end of our time. I just want to ask you if there was anything else that you want to include or offer before we finish. Well, I guess I would just like to say I always welcome all those people who call me and call on me, and uh, I do my best for every person. Uh, and uh, I always tell my spirit guys too, I'll take good care of everybody, but you guys got to help me do it because, you know, you get a lot of different people coming for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes you got to, mm -hmm. you know, call on your spirit guides to say, okay, what should I do now? Or what should I do next? Or what's the right approach for this one? Or what's the mm -hmm. best thing to, you know? So uh, I, I'm happy to hear from everyone and, and I always do my best job for everyone. So, uh, you know, life is a big adventure, and, you know, I'm always in tune with that idea that if spirit's guiding everything, it's guiding the people I meet, and it's guiding the things I do, and it helps make life good. Yes, it does. Yeah, win, win, win for everyone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Love those. Yes, you cannot go wrong with those. Those are amazing. That's very good. Thank you, Dan, again for being my guest today. This has been a great conversation. And for our listeners, again, who wish to continue to connect with Dan, check out his offerings, his packages and specials, please visit his website, MagicalAwakening.com. And we can hope to hear more from Dan, maybe in the future, some other offerings. And if you guys are also interested in checking a little more about myself, Trixie, with Soul Balancing, you can visit my website at soulbalancing.world. Thank you again for everyone here. All right, all right. I know you're still here, yeah. I know you're still near, huh? Still care. The last time I saw your face, before you met God's grace, since the day that you left, it's always been hard days, hard nights, still the same, still the struggle, still remain. Love will never end, can't be smothered by the pain. So numb at your wake when they covered up your frame. I thought it was asleep, falling in too deep, leaping in six feet, just to pull you out the casket. For another second, got a question to ask it. Feeling my chest with a hole in it, gasping, don't wanna let go. And this honor was passing, but can't control. When depression attacks me, like when it's Heard instead, dear listeners, through podcast radio on realrevolutionradio.com. Never before has inspirational podcast radio been taken to this next level of wow. Until now. Today in the age of information, more and more people are searching for answers and in solutions and how to better approach and perceive every day-to-day -day concerns by tuning in to realrevolutionradio.com. Isn't it about time we take back our lives? Back in consciousness. In a higher state of awareness, in the evolution of our own state of higher well-being. Yes, we can do so consciously every day by tuning in to the many groundbreaking and third eye-opening podcasts. Our new Cleveland-based network of over 33 paradigm-shifting internet talk shows. Only on realrevolutionradio.com. Be part of that change. Evolve. Be inspired. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans. 30% of Americans who are planning home improvements of $5,000 or more will pay for those renovations with a high-interest credit card. That may not be a great idea. A better idea may be to take cash out of your home with a Quicken Loans 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. The rate today on our 30-year fixed-rate mortgage is 4.125%. APR, 4.22%. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. Rate subject to change. 8.88% fee to receive this discounted rate. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 33.